Always great catching up with my next guest, TJ Laramie, who's finally got a fight. He's going to be competing at Fight Night 17, January 21st against John DeJesus. TJ, what's up, man? How are you? Good, man. How are you? Doing great. Uh, it was good to see you this summer. I, it's been a while since we've chatted. Of course, we're playing some video games uh, back in Las Vegas, but uh, I know you've been doing some grappling. We haven't actually seen you since April of last year. Uh, what's been the reason for the layoff who people might be wondering in terms of MMA fights? Uh, so basically, uh, well, I got cut by the UFC after my last fight there. So it's kind of like a whole career reset a little bit, <clears throat> I feel like. And uh, just in the process of finding the right fights at this point, uh, Cause I'm young enough to where I could uh, get a get a good reset going and uh, not really taking in the best competition all the time. Uh, I'm not saying like easy fights in particular, but uh, definitely like my whole career has been filled with trying to find fight the top guys in my region or country for that matter. And then also in the UFC, I didn't really get the the most favorable matchups. Uh, so yeah, it's been more of a reset, kind of rebuild, and uh, just staying active and grappling is in competition in general, you know, because it's kind of impossible to fight as active, as active as I want to compete, I wouldn't be able to fight that many times a year, you know. Yeah, no, it makes sense. It's good that you get the, the grappling opportunities there. Now, I, I spoke to Tristan Connolly a few months ago, and he had mentioned to me that, you know, the plan was to keep both you and him and a few of the other Canadian fighters on the roster, assuming they'd go back to Canada. And then when that didn't happen because of the vaccine stuff, uh, they, they decided to kind of release you all at one time. Is there is there any truth to that? That was sort of his theory. I was just curious if you had any insight. Uh, with the email I got, it was more uh, they had to, like, clear roster space for the upcoming season of Contender Series. Oh, okay. uh, gotcha. The way Contender Series works now is basically if you win, you you get a contract. It doesn't really have to be in an exciting manner or anything like that. So that that was the email I got anyway. Okay, that that makes sense. Um, let's talk about your opponent, who I think people probably remember. I was looking at who he's fought. I mean, I remember him fighting Aaron Pico, but I didn't realize he's also fought Kaya Kamaka, Pat Sabatini, someone that you fought as well, and Billy Quarantillo. So I'm sure from that perspective as well, it's kind of a good opponent because this guy is like a veteran. And not only that, but you know he's going to show up to fight, right? I know that happens sometimes. Yeah, so John De Jesus is a far better than his record will show for mm -hmm. sure. And if you look at his losses, it's all against top top guys for the most part. He's got a few here and there where he's lost to some lesser competition, I'd say. But he's also got wins against some great guys too. He's beaten uh, <clears throat> some uh, Russian guy that was like seventeen and one. He's beaten uh, John Teixeira. It's kind of a controversial win, but still, he, he's up there competing with some of the best guys and. Uh, even against Kai Kamaka, he dropped Kamaka at one point. So John De Jesus is extremely dangerous. And I mean, as far as it goes for me saying trying to take uh an easier fights, this wasn't this wasn't really what I had in mind. But I was gonna know, say I, I'm always up for uh tough competition. It makes me train harder and keeps me motivated. And I've been so busy and active that uh and honestly really building my skill set even higher than what it was. Uh that i'm excited for this fight and uh he's a good opponent just he has some obvious weaknesses in his game i feel like but he's he comes to fight he comes to scrap no matter what you know he talks shit during the fights that from what i've seen and uh he's a gamer for sure yeah and it looked like you got plenty of notice for this fight did you get a full camp i know you're always training but still it helps when you have the, the little, plenty of notice um yeah so i was training for a fight to hopefully fight on uh the unified card in Toronto. Oh, and, no way. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. Okay, cool. Yeah, something fell through with that. And then uh, I was training for the, I did a little camp for the World Jiu Jitsu Championship. So I've been in shape. I've been competing quite often. And then uh, I got a, at least a five week notice for this fight, I'd say. Nice. So yeah, I've, I've gotten, <clears throat> my weight was already good uh, in a good spot. I wasn't like scrambling to make weight or anything. Trying to manage a MMA camp. <clears throat> Uh, was a bit of a challenge at the beginning, but I got it all sorted out. I mean, as far as training partners for this fight and stuff like that, but surprisingly, there's like quite a bit of good southpaws uh, in my area in the Midwest, and then also Kyle Preplik, who's also fighting on the cards, a great southpaw to work with for this fight. So, honestly, I think in the future it's going to be harder to find orthodox guys to train for at this point. Yeah, no, no, I'd agree. And, and by the way, are you still kind of doing uh, the fight bookings yourself or is it Reno or, di or did you end up going with management? I know that's something we talked about last time. 
Uh, Reno, Reno, Reno does all my stuff. For yeah, me. no, I know that's the case with Kyle as well too, which is uh, which is great. Um, so let's talk a bit about training because when I saw you in July uh, for two seventy six, you were just out there training with your buddy Cody Stamen. Uh, what type of training have you done since then? Because I know you're traveling everywhere. It seems. Yeah, I think uh, actually when I was out there in July, uh, I was competing at. I don't know if if I was out there just watching friends compete or if no. I, I think was, you had something and then it fell through. If I'm not mistaken, you had like a grappling uh, thing and then it didn't end yeah. up working out. Yeah, I was supposed to compete at the American Nationals and that yeah, it didn't I didn't get like a registration form in time or something like that. But yeah, so training's been really good, man. Just out here in Ohio, like up in my grappling, even like to great lengths, and then getting a uh, great stand up work into uh, boxing specifically. I was training for a pro boxing match. Uh, didn't really go through, but, uh, yeah, I've been training uh, a lot of different aspects of my game. I feel like, especially the mental part too, got a new, uh, like uh, sports psychologist awesome. and uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's pr pretty much it. Training has been good training between Ohio and Michigan for the most part. And then Windsor a little bit. Now that my visa is all processed, I can go back and forth. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I've been training at like Mercy Lago uh mma where like that's where like joaquin buckley trains uh kenny cross uh, mando gutierrez um and then also uh michigan top team i've been getting a lot of working with darren Kirkshank, who's a really good look for this fight cool and then um yeah you mentioned the ohio uh gym there training over there um who, who like how did you who did you know over there to go train there and what, what gym is that at so actually uh a guy who's from uh the same area I'm from, like Windsor, Essex County. Um, Dante Leone is a two-time uh, grapple black belt world champion. He's a uh, got third at ADCC this year. Um, he's from that exact same area, and he owns a gym out here. So it was like a perfect opportunity to to move out here and be around like a <clears throat> like a, a world. Even though it's not MMA specific, you know, mm -hmm. it's still being around like a world championship team. And being around a bunch of guys that are going to be able to push me every day. And <clears throat> it's not like they're not willing to, you know, help me out with, like, uh, some of the MMA work and stuff like that when it comes to specifics that I need to work on, say, wall work or um, anything along those lines. They're always willing to help. And, uh, yeah, it was just a great opportunity. And then between here and Michigan, it's a little bit of traveling, but um, when it comes to, like, all the quality work I can get in, it's the right move for sure great and, and remind me have you and kyle fought on the same card before you and kyle preplek uh once before in michigan actually okay. i almost thought about this fight but uh someone asked me this the other day um but uh yeah me and kyle fought on xfc or no was that the vince murdoch fight or was that the other yeah. fight oh there was yeah. a vince murdoch fight okay XFC or something like that but XFC, yeah yeah, yeah some, some uh michigan promotion and uh yeah that was the only time or was it WXC? I can't remember. I always get mixed up with the abbreviations and stuff. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, and, and the weight cut's going well. Obviously, uh, you know, you've been at featherweight for a while, so I'm sure the cut's not too bad. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in range for sure. Like, it's not, it's not going to be anything. It's not going to be my hardest cut. Probably won't be my easiest cut, but it'll get done. Any chance, you talked about this before, any chance going to bantamweight in the future, or you think that's the doors closed on that? Uh, it's definitely an option for sure. You know, I mean... Uh, it's going to be a long process to do so. It wouldn't be like a one, like just a one, like right away go to 135. I'd probably have to find a catch weight first to see how I feel at 40 and then go down to 35 afterwards. But I feel like there's a lot of uh, people willing to do 140 catch weights, actually, surprisingly. Um, okay. And we've had uh, someone willing, someone in Canada actually willing to, to do a 140 catch weight. It just wasn't the right time at that moment. But yeah, it's definitely something that I still have my eyes on. And just last thing on camp, uh, how's your brother doing, Tony? Uh, any update on him? I know he did have a fight, I think, a few. I know he had the boxing fight, and then he had something a few months back as well that didn't pan out. Uh, how, how's he doing? Uh, he's good. He's fighting also on the uh, the fight night card. The oh, fight. Good. Oh, I got to hit him up then. There you go. So that, that, yeah. that'll be good. Um, <laughs> and uh, who's going to be in your corner? I imagine Reno will be there, your coach. Uh, who else will be in the cage with you? Uh, Reno, uh, Eric Montgomery, and... Um... And then, uh, we'll, I'm not sure there's supposed to be a third guy, but yeah, ma mainly just Reno and, uh, uh, Eric Montgomery from Windsor as well. Um, we'll be in my corner for this one. How's this one playing out on January 21st? Um, I honestly see myself being able to win the fight, both on the feet and on the ground. Um, I'm not really going to limit myself to where I feel like I'm going to finish him, but, 
uh, I do feel like I am going to finish him, most likely a submission. Um, just based on what I've seen from his game, you know, he's fought a lot of good grapplers, but not a lot of g- good guys with, uh, like, top awareness and being able to hold position. Like, he fought Pico, who was able to hold him down pretty much the whole time, but Pico was more interested in just fucking killing him than he was, like, trying to grind him out and smash him. So it's mm-hmm. it's two different styles. I feel like I'm going to get to a dominant position and just secure the submission. What are your goals this year? I'm sure, you know, being active is one of them. You said, you know, like I said, getting in there and all that. But uh, what are some other things you hope to achieve this year? Because I know we're we're in January. People sort of make their goals, right? Yeah. uh, uh, Three to four times is what I want to fight this year as far as MMA. Uh, Mm -hmm. I'm going to be in grappling, of course, still stay busy in between. And then, uh, yeah, just more stuff with my business, my concrete business. I want to establish that a little bit more. Make Mm -hmm. some money, you know. Um, Getting older in life, you kind of realize how important stuff like that is you know uh yeah. you, you want to build a, a avenue of income outside of fighting because th- that was one thing in the ufc where it was like i kind of lost uh i almost thought like i was i was uh pairing fighting with money too much a little bit at mm-hmm. times where it was like even despite not making a lot of money in the ufc it's still like big checks all at once etc all that you know and uh it's like you kind of lose your reason for why you're fighting a little bit i feel like and uh so yeah just having a secure income outside of fighting um and building my business is definitely another goal you still cutting hair or no yeah i cut hair here and there um mainly just it's almost more of like a hobby for like supplemental income here and there yeah. pays for gas insurance and stuff like that uh now that i can go back to windsor back and forth um it's a little bit easier to do that because I could just book a bunch of haircuts on the weekend when I go home. And then last question, I know it's kind of hard to tell from an email, but did you get the sense the UFC was just like, Hey, when a couple more fights will bring you back. Cause you're, you're still a young guy, man. Like I think of all people to get released, you're someone I think people will expect to see back in the UFC. Did you kind of get that sense from kind of talking to them directly? Um, yeah, like getting the email kind of seemed like, I'll oh, just win a couple more and then you'll be good. But I mean, I'm not really, in a position at this point to even kind of be thinking about that uh i'm not like landlocked on the ufc where it's like uh as far as uh where i want to go with things you know what i mean like i feel like the ufc is like people want to think of it it, well it really is the the apex of fighting at this point as far as like skilled fighters and stuff like that but there's so many other avenues to go now like i think if you look at the bantamweight tournament in bellator you got some guys in there that could easily be in the top 10 in the UFC. And then same with every other 145 and one, uh, 155 in Bellator, especially, uh, like all those guys could definitely mix it in with the top 10 of the UFC, in my opinion. And, uh, I'm not, yeah, like I said, I'm not like set on going back to the UFC or I'll just see how it plays out. I mean, uh, I feel like, I don't want to like hate on the UFC in any way, but no, you know, I know what you're saying. You're not bashing them, but you're also like, Hey, there's way more opportunities. Plus you didn't even mention there's PFL as well. Look at a guy like Brendan yeah. Lockney can't even get a contract. And then he goes and wins a million dollars in PFL. Right. So it can work exactly. out for the better. Like PFL is a great example. Like it's getting to the point now where PFL is having to have the challenger series to see who gets into the tournament. Cause so many people are trying to get into that tournament cause they see the opportunity and like, you look at stuff like that. It's like we're we're top athletes. We deserve to get paid a little more. I I believe honestly because we sacrifice more than most athletes by far, uh, as far as our bodies and time goes. Um, so PFL is kind of doing it right. You know, even their base contracts are at par or better than the UFC. On top of from what I know, if you make the tournament, you get like a somewhat of a monthly salary, um, yeah. and then you have the opportunity to win that million dollars too. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey, TJ, thanks for doing this, man. I know you're a busy guy. If there's anyone you'd like to thank before we get out of here, any sponsors or any social media you want to mention, I'll give you the last word. I just want to thank everybody who's helped me for, throughout this whole camp. Um, uh, everybody at Adamus Jiu-Jitsu in Toledo, Murcielago MMA, uh, Michigan Top Team, and MTC Windsor. You know, everybody uh, takes a village to to make this work. And uh, yeah, I'm just grateful to have those people around.